Hey, welcome back to Mill. My name is Bill. This is Pirate Solutions Forestry. Uh, we're going to talk today about, <laughs> and if you didn't watch my video yesterday, go ahead and watch it. We we're speed milling on the Norwood HD 36 version 2 by ourselves. No swamper manual mill to see how fast we could cut a couple of logs. And I think it um, kind of speaks for itself. Uh, I, the benchmark of what you hear in sawmills is a thousand board feet a day. And the question is on a manual mill, can you do a thousand board feet a day? Well, I think if you watch my videos from yesterday, I think I've proven that you could definitely do a thousand board feet a day <coughs> on a manual mill with no problem by yourself. I did 200 board feet in basically 30 minutes of milling. Um, so in theory, you know, over, you could do 400 board feet in, let's just say an hour, two hours, 800, two and a half hours, a thousand. Um, so let's just say three hours. But what that takes to do that is a unique set of circumstances. Either you have to be milling off really big stuff, um, really thick, big stuff, and then it's really no problem. Or if you're milling small stuff like I am, one buys, then you have to have the perfect size logs and the perfect, not just the perfect size, but um, straight easy to handle, no limbing and trimming um, logs that mill simply. And I'll show you what I mean. So I did this pile of one by tens yesterday. It's about 200 board feet here uh, with those two on the top, those two flitch cuts. It's definitely 200 board feet. Forget what you have over there. Just set that aside. It was more than 200 board feet in 30 minutes by myself, unloading and loading by myself. Um, so even if you called it a half hour each, you can still do a thousand more feet in a day. If you're milling big stuff like that, let's say you're milling 10 by 10s and you want to calculate the board footage in that, um, you could definitely do a thousand board feet in a day easily. Uh, the, but this is really where more of the question mark remains so if you were doing two by material probably just be a lot of log loading one by material takes longer could you do a thousand board feet oh say hi to danny could you do a thousand board feet of stickers uh, maybe i've cut three i've cut 300 board feet of stickers in an hour with a really big log so you probably could even do a thousand board feet and basically stickers is milling a log twice you're milling it into inch this way and then flipping it and milling it into inch this way. So you're milling the log twice. But I still think you could do a thousand. Milling these kind of logs, these pitch pine logs, and I'm picking out ones that are fairly straight and easy to mill. And this one I believe is a lodge pine log, but it came from his property, so we're gonna mill it anyway. This one's 12 feet long, it's perfectly straight. It's not that big around. It's not going to, I don't believe I'm going to, it's not going to yield one by tens. These will probably be one by eights and one by sixes. We'll find out. But when they're this straight and this untapered, pretty easy. You can definitely do a thousand board feet in a day. If you look at the pile that's up on the hill right there, it's a fairly, fairly simple pile. Straight, um, no bark. They're long. You know, those are between 12 and 16. There's even some 20 footers up there, but you could do a thousand board feet out of that very simply in a day. So can you do a thousand board feet a day on a manual mill? No problem. What we're doing is we're trying to stress our mill out. I am trying to see where the failure points are on my mill and also testing a new style of band out called a Stella cut band or a Stellite band and seeing how long they will go. So this is the same band that was yesterday. I didn't even take it off last night, which is rare for me. I usually take a band, the bands off every night. 
We're going to keep cutting with this band until it won't cut straight anymore. So far, it's gotten perfect. Um, I'm going to keep going with it and see how many board feet I can cut with it so I can report back to what I think that the shtick of the Stella band or Stella cut band, what it, Norwood is calling is, it's a German band. It's got a stellite insert every third tooth on the raker tooth that is as wide as the kerf. It's very similar to carbide. Only having one every third tooth cuts down the cost of the band, and it's supposed to increase the durability of the band about 30%. So we really want to find that out. I know that durability defend, depends on a lot of different factors. Um, what you're cutting how dirty it is the whole nine yards but we're putting this through fairly soft wood it's a 10 degree band which i don't normally cut with i normally cut with sevens um and we're gonna see how far this band is gonna go till till i can't use it anymore uh, so i can get that feedback back to norwood and then they can tell you and um, you can learn if because these bands are basically twice as much as a standard band we want to find out if it's worth it to run them. And they can be sharpened. I've already showed that. You can watch the video. But anyway, we got this lodge. I believe it's a lodge pine up on here. It came from his property. We're going to mill it into floorboards. Um, however big we can get the cant, keep that cant uniform at 6 or 8 um, or 10, so to speak. But this won't be a 10. And we're going to mill this off. We're going to see how long it takes. We're going to see how the band cuts. And we're going to keep going. I have lots of, I've got not lots. I've got three more logs on the log deck over there uh, that I can grab and throw up any time. I do realize there's a little cycle time between having to turn this machine around and grab one and throw it up here. Um, and that I am set up pretty well for just kicking the slab cuts off the mill and then throwing my boards up on my sawhorses at the end. So think also part of can you mill a thousand board feet a day is you need to be set up right to do it. If you're constantly bringing in logs or offloading and then having to go put them somewhere, uh, you know, that that's going to add to your time. I still think you could do a thousand board feet a day. I think it's completely reasonable and I think I've proven it. So we're going to mill this one off. I'm going to take, I'm going to come over and I'm going to take a quick look. Um, Actually, I'm going to move you guys because you're going to view from over there so you can see the outfeed side. I think this clutch is starting to go. And I have a heavy-duty clutch inside. Let's just hope it holds on. Um, but you're going to be able to see the outflow side of the sawdust and see me mill the whole thing. I'm going to go at it pretty hard. I've got my mics on, so that messes with the noise of the mill. Also, uh, I want to show you something. And, you know, we're, we're here for information purposes only. But if you look at my sawmill band, you see where there's this big, you know, I was milling pitch pine yesterday. You see this buildup on here. Uh, that's right where the water was not running. And I kind of messed up yesterday. I had a full tank of Donham water. But I didn't have any pine saw in it. So I dumped some pine saw in it today. After we mill this log, we're going to see what that looks like. See if it's cleaned it off. Um, <laughs> I am going up to Norwood next week um, for a meet and greet and look at their new products and then an open house a uh, week from Saturday. And I am going to be with the engineers and I am going to talk to them about some of my findings and some of my concerns, and we're not going to talk about those right now, but I do have some concerns about the Stella, the Stella Cup band. <laughs> From the standpoint of where, um, I believe, and I've, I think I've already seen it in milling hardwood with it, which doesn't really like hardwood all that much. But I think what I've seen from milling hardwood with it is that because you only have a Stellite insert every third tooth, the other teeth wear at a different rate. Um, the stellite almost doesn't wear at all. And one of the telltale signs that your band's starting to get dull is you'll start to get an intermittent or a vibratory or a oscillating cut where it's even if you haven't hit anything. 
And I think what's happening is the stellite is taking a nice big bite and the other teeth are kind of bridging the cut and they're not cutting very well. So it's a little bit of a concern. Uh, I would like to run this pan to the point of it won't cut anymore and see how many board feet I can get out of it so that we can gauge whether it's worth it or not. So anyway, so I get a real good idea of how long this log takes. It's not going to take very long. Uh, it is, oh, <laughs> one more thing. If you're going to cut your logs, okay, if you run one of these mills and you've built this mill the way Norwood says, do not cut your logs at uh, a standard dimension. Don't cut your logs at 12 feet, 8 feet, 10 feet, whatever. 10 feet doesn't matter, but don't cut them at divisions of four. So don't cut them at eight or 10. Make sure you at least go six inches over. This log is a perfect example. This log's cut just a speck over 12 feet. I didn't cut this log. This is the way it came from the tree guy. I ha it took me a while to position this log so I could get each end just barely hanging over. This one's barely on. It's probably going to come off when I'm turning it, to be honest with you. So this log is probably just looking at the bunks. It's probably cut at like 12 foot two. That's a shitty spot to cut a log. Don't do it, guys. You know, I, I understand it. If you cut it at eight foot even, you won't be able to bridge three bunks. You need it at eight six. If you're going to cut it at 12, cut it at 12 six. This dimension here is shorter. It's like the only spot in the mill where it's not four feet. So 16 foot logs don't make as much difference because you a 16 foot log will fit from that first bunk to that bunk and still hang over a little bit. But 12 foot and eight foot, cut them at eight foot six minimum, 12 foot six minimum. So I've got into this 12 minutes already. We're gonna fire up the mill. Uh, we're going to take top off it, flip it over. We're going to get it into a cant and then mill off some boards. I've already got my four-quarter scale set. Danny's chilling out over there. And uh, you'll be able to see speed of cut on a 12-foot log. I'm just going to guess that before I make a cut, I'm going to be at 13. So we'll go with 13 to get our time. And this log is basically 12 inches across which is going to yield um, 12 times 7, which is 84. So this is going to yield an 8.4 inch cant. So we should get 1 by 8s out of this. Um, that's going to be the goal. Well, we're going to go to milling, see how we do. And I'm running pine salt. Should clean up the band. Uh, I don't like the way that it's... Spraying on the back of the band. I'm just going to move it over just a hair. And uh, we'll go to town here. So we should end up with an 8 inch cant. Mill 1 by 8s. We should, in theory, get 4. I, we should get, we should be able to get 8 out of it. 1 by 8 by 12 is 8. Eight board feet. Um, we should get eight, so we should end up with that sixty. What's that? Sixty-four feet, something like that. My water. I'm gonna pour the water to it till it cleans up the band. Uh, get my tape measure. So I'm going to try on my first two sides to set my width at eight. This cut's going to be, I might try it at 12, but it looks like it's going to be at 11. I'm going to, might just cut it at 11, depending on what it looks like when I come up, just come up to 11. Close the, oh, I got my mill clamp down still. So that looks like minimum right there. I'm just going to cut it at 11. I'm going to close my throat down just a hair. 
make sure we got water flowing. Let's go ahead and cut it right there. This band is still cutting terrific. Um. I think I'm just going to come down to uh, nine and seven eighths and take it off there. It looks like I need a one inch flitch off this. It's pretty thin down this end, so I'm just going to take it at nine and seven eighths, take a one inch flitch off. My adjustable guide hit there. Let's get the flitch. I will edge all these flitches later. I'm going to flip this one over. Beautiful piece of wood. This is a nice, nice, uh, nice. Log. There is a little bit of a crook in it sideways. I hope that doesn't kill my yield. <coughs> Got bad weather coming the next couple of days, so I want to get a little bit of cutting in today. I've got my uh, stops at four inches right now, all three of them, so it should be good enough for the first two cuts. Okay, that stayed on. Yep, did. All right, so as long as we don't go below four inches, we should be all, well, say five inches, we should be all good here. Oh, this one's up a little high. Drop it down to four. That one's up a little high. I'm going to drop that one down to four. And I don't need all three dogs on it, so I'll just dog it with two. So now I'm looking for divisions of... Looks like I'm not going to have any problem getting to eight. So I need nine and an eighth. So we're gonna try and take this at nine and an eighth, and then drop to eight. Nine and an eighth. Looks like it's gonna be reasonable. Give me a reasonable flitch. We'll just cut it. Nope. Not gonna give me a flash and drop to eight. Hopefully we cut it deep enough at eight. Got one by eights. Or we'll just end up leaving this and know it the other way. So there's eight. I still think that's a little thin. It's not a board yet. That's going to leave a lot of weight on my boards. I have to take a look at what I have going on here for straightness. Um, 
think what it's going to end up being is it's going to end up being sixes. So I'm going to take this. These are going to end up being one by sixes. Or I could try even take it the other way. Since we'll see where eight ends up on four inch scale here, you know, one inch scale. So eights, it doesn't work out bad. Eight's kind of high. So we'll see if we can get it two eight inches wide the other way. Because I could take another skim cut if I wanted to get to um, four inch scale. Actually, I can go ahead and do it right now and then try to mill it. on eight inch the other way. So let's drop two, this is gonna be a waste cut. We're gonna drop right to our four inch scale. That goes to seven and three quarters, is on four inch scale. So let's take it off there. So it's going to be close. I'm not a big fan of how this is coming out right now. Not a big fan at all. That's only going to give me five wing free boards if I do it that way. I've got a really good flat on the other side. I think I'm just going to take it to six. So I'm at seven and three quarters. If I drop the six right now, I give myself a two by. Well, let's just cut it at six, and then we're just gonna probably. Oh uh, no! I take it back. I take it back. We're not gonna want to do that. The other side. It's gonna get us a little unbalanced. It's this middle that stinks here. Oh, I'm really wide in the middle down there, though. I think. I think that's what I'm going to do. It's going to go to six. It's going to get me a inch and five eighths board for two by. Or I take one off each side. Try and balance it out. So if I come up, I was at seven and three quarters at six and five eighths. I take a one by off right now, I get like a one by six, and then uh, I can take one off the other side. It'll balance a lot better. That's going to balance the log a little better. I'm going to have to take a piece off the other side to get to six inches. So we're going to end up rolling it three times. No, there's no way around it. So we'll try to get her squared up on the side here. Clean the top off. Then we'll roll it again, just 90 degrees, and get it to six, and then roll it and mill it out.
so let's clean the top off it. Somewhere around. Ten and a half. That's pretty low there. Ten. Ten and a half. Well, let's just go ten and a half. Pulls down the throat. Roll it on its side, take it to six. We just need one dog on this one, just cut it at six, still on the bunk. Like I said, I get a guy doing a roof that'll buy that. We'll flip it on its side, mill it out into one inch boards. Get our stops down to zero. Just stop down and we're good to roll. Just barely on the bunk here. Almost off it. Alright. No out a bunch of one by six. So like top cuts. Gonna be around something just above eight. So I'll go to my one inch scale just above the eight and take it down from there. It's not going to be a great cut on the top. Of Next cuts at uh, like seven and three quarters. Going through it like a laser beam up to next one's going to be at like six and five eighths.
two. Next one's going to be at like five and a half. Oh, nailed it. Next one's going to be at four and three eighths. That's going to be a one. Clean off the sawdust, cut it at one, and we'll call it done. Might have to adjust my stops on my uh, dogs on this one to clear. Take this one out of the mix. All right, time. Take a look at the uh, time on the camera here. See how long that took. 33, so giving myself 13, it took 20 minutes to cut that out. Give you a look at the wood quick. That laser beam straight. These are beautiful. Just gorgeous. They're not pitch fine, but they're beautiful. Perfect one by six flooring. Whether he decides to use the lodge pine or not, I don't know, but it's his, so it's what I got shipped to me to cut. Okay, get the good look here. Really pretty stuff. Nice straight grain. Not a ton of knots in it. 
cut perfectly, uh, perfectly flat, perfectly straight. So, band lives another day. So, what do we get out of this? We get uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We get eight of them. So, we got that uh, one by six. Let's look at this chart here. One by six on 12. So, we got one by six at 12 feet is six board feet. So, we got eight of them. So, we got 48 board feet there. So, we're at 250. Um, we're at 250 conservatively because we're not taking into consideration the flitches. And, uh, that, I'm going to throw another log up here. Um, we will call this like, uh, part three of the speed cutting test. And, uh, it's also a blade dur durability test. We're going to keep going, but um, I'll throw another log up. We'll cut another log. We're going to keep going until that band kicks us. Right now, it's cutting perfect. It went through that like it wasn't there. Um, really, it, there's a big difference, guys, between pitch pine and lodge pine like that. Big difference. Or white pine. The pitch pine's just harder. Um, it does not mill that easy. That was like, I could have probably taken any old band out of my box here and milled that probably just as fast to be honest with you it just wouldn't have been as smooth that was smooth every cut was just like even and smooth and shh the whole time so i'm um, gonna call this one a video and we'll pump another one out so for now in the how much can you mill how long are these bands gonna go this is pirate solutions and danny out